السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, I wish you a good day, good week, good month, uh, إن شاء الله. And for the people who are trying to go to make Hajj and visit the holy places, may Allah accept and reward accept your Hajj and reward you. I hope that you can make a dua for everyone globally who needs your dua, as well as to make a dua for the people who are stranded in uh, conflict zones or in a poverty-stricken area, or, 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 and for the Muslims and for the non-Muslims as well. Today is a talk about Kiki dance and the philosophy behind the remote management. What is the relationship between the Kiki and the remote management? Okay? Kiki dance is a dance. It was a song written by somebody called Drake, very famous to his girlfriend and he wanted to explore his love to her okay then he asked one of his uh, friends who has a show called Shaggy Show Shoker to dance it and to promote it for him this is how it started somebody loved somebody else and asked one of his friends to dance it so it can become very famous as it is now. Kiki dance became a phenomena or an epic or a trend in the whole Middle East and the Far East, Southeast and everywhere. Even in the West as well as a phenomena. Okay? And it's not the first time to find someone who do the kiki dance. Okay. I remember in my visits in America in the 90s, the Afro-American brothers there, whenever on the motorway there was a jam and there's a nice music played on the radio at that time, okay, they stop the car and they come out and they do their dance before kiki and piki and the others. It was not something new. The new thing about it is, especially to the people in the Middle East and the Far East, not everything should be done somewhere. You just adopt it without having anything to protect yourself and your sight from it. We saw girls with hijab, girls with veil, with niqab, boys with beard and others going out and doing exactly what the Afro-Americans were doing 20 years ago on the motorway. No value, no substance, nothing. Kiki is not, the, the, the song is not the first time. In the 50s, I, 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 I recollect my memory from the 50s. If you remember, the twist again as the music and the rock and roll, cha-cha-cha, hula hoop, Saturday Night Fever with... Uh, What's his name? Uh, the, top, uh, the top star, I can't remember his name now. Greece, uh, uh, Travolta, John Travolta, who did Saturday Night Fever in the late 70s and Greece as well. And today is Kiki. Every day there will be Kiki coming to us. Every day. Can I produce my Kiki song as well and let everybody else to listen to it? This is what we are failing to. So we are actually at the receiving end. All the time. Because we have no substance, we have no value, we have no culture, we have no uh, vision to protect our society. So, what is the philosophy behind the remote management? First time in my history as humanitarian and social worker in the 90s to hear about remote management when the Iraq problem happened. And there was a siege of Iraq as a whole, as a country, after 1991-1992. And you find all the INGO, the international agencies, are opening their offices in Amman, in Jordan, and doing this remote control management to control the expenditure and the program in Iraq. This becomes another phenomena in a conflict zones in Somalia, most of the big organizations, including UN agencies, were actually in Nairobi, not in Maqdishu. South Sudan was the same, in Nairobi or Uganda, not in 
uh, Juba or Rombek. Okay, Yemen nowadays is the same. Most of the agencies don't have offices inside. Same in Iraq. Most of the organization used to have offices in uh, Jordan as a, again. So this kind of remote management is not something new. Okay? But remote management, as Ahmad al-Sheikh, well, I've, got, I've got three people here who helped me in this research. Ahmad al-Sheikh, Muhammad Najm, and Abdul Aziz Khater. The idea was of Abdul Aziz Khater who told me to do, talk about the remote management. Then Ahmad al-Sheikh came from the uh, technological or social media point of view uh, and he added his piece. And Muhammad Najm came to add his piece on the social and humanitarian ground. And Abdul Rahman, as you all know, is the one who is dealing with the, uh, the media of, 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 of the production of this, inshallah. Yeah, if we want to make this kind of remote management, it's a complex process, needs more management skills than what is required for traditional management skills. Managers should create more conducive atmosphere to create the balance between principles, parameters, policies, and strategies. This will require choosing the suitable candidates carefully and explaining to them organizational vision allow them to learn, advance, participate positively and effectively guided by organization policies and principles. This is the difficulties which Ahmad al-Sheikh brought or the requirement. What is the skills required for remote management? I think I take all what Ahmad al-Sheikh brought to us on the table is for communication, for marketing, and for sales and purchasing, and designs and so on and so on. Skills required for remote management is proper planning to enable everyone to achieve their goals, proper time management, communication and networking skills, accepting criticism using new and technological methods. This is what Ahmad Sheikh wrote to me. Where to use remote management? Where to use it? In which area to use remote management? Information technology? Civil engineering, drawing, the designs, the architect, accounting and accountability, when you receive the accounts from the company to you, sales and purchasing, and for sales and purchasing, every day we receive one or two or three or four or five calls about the phone you have, about insurance, about buying and purchasing, about selling, about communication, about, about from where? If Vodafone or, uh, who else, or, Insta, or uh, Samsung or BT or others would like to promote, they hire people in India because they're cheap labor or in Egypt as well. I received two calls from on my company on the phone. And one of them was from Cairo, Tajammu Al Khamis. In Cairo, the Fifth Avenue in Cairo, in, Nasr, in the north of Cairo, Nasser City. And the other one was from Delhi, for the same company. Young, skillful, cheaper labor cost. And for insurance, I had a car accident last year. And my God, every other day, a company calling with an Indian accent. Arab accent, Pakistani accent, sometimes English accent. Third person, research and development, of course. This is needed. Training and learning, it could be done. Designing, as I said, designing whether for the internet or for the civil engineering. Customer services, okay, with all of you, when you buy something from Asda, from whatever you call it, uh, uh, Lidl, from... Uh, uh, what else? Uh, all the big companies, uh, actually, you go back to them. Uh, secretarial and administration support. This is where to use remote management and remote control. Philosophy of thinking. Advantages of remote management is delegation of responsibility. 
Okay, that's one thing. Create new jobs. Saving time and money, especially for traveling and having meetings and so on and so. And creating more flexible systems. Okay, you can call your staff anytime. With the time difference, something very nice. If you have got a staff in Australia and you are in London, there's 10 hours between you. You wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, you have the call, or 7 o'clock in the morning, it is there 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Or they, if, the, if some big news happened in the world, it, they see it 10 hours before you in London, and 17 hours or 15 hours or 18 hours before people wake up in America. The time zone, saving money on time, creating more flexible systems, retaining skilled employees, and attracting more skilled workers. That's good. Increase productivity. Spending less money on renting offices, accommodations, furniture, cars, etc., etc. Creating better balance between working time and a break time. Give more independence atmosphere in managing and organizing workforces because we give the, give the space to the people okay, to think and work. Creating more opportunities for women to work from home. If women is looking after children, or if elderly people who are retired and have good experience, they can work from home. Pensioners. Decreasing absenteeism and sickness leave. Benefiting from short-term contractor agreement. There is communication between customers and the employees to improve relationship between them. Giving more chances to people with a special need, which is required now. It's by law in certain countries should be 10% of the workforce actually addressing the people with special needs. Establishing justice and equality between whom? Because you don't know who is behind uh, the camera in a different country, uh, gender, race, nationalities, age, and so on, so on, so on, so on. This is the advantages. The challenges and disadvantages is there'll be social gap because those people will not have an organization to work in. There's no atmosphere around them. They'll be isolated from you. Increase vulnerable jobs. The jobs could be terminated anytime because it's mostly short term. Okay? Increase technological infrastructure. Every time you have to invest heavily in technology, which is become very expensive. Okay? There's not much traditional management. It's, it's, it's different style altogether from the traditional hands-on face management. Okay? Face-to-face -face management. Decreasing or losing organizational loyalty. Yes, there's no organizational loyalty. Why? Because I am sitting in front of a box, of a screen, of a screen. This is the only relationship between me and my organization. This is and my salary and the duty. So there's no loyalty. If anybody else will give me a better job, I'll just jump off the boat and go to join another organization. Uh, increase training and development costs because every now and then you have to keep training them. You have to keep training them, updating them, those people in different countries. Being isolated and depressed. You know why isolation? Because, as I said before, I'm sitting in front of a screen. This is all what I see. Nothing else. And this is against the social norm. Less support to human resources development. Yeah, less support, even if I do some training. Mixing working and bringing them. Sometimes I can phone my employee in, in, in India or in Pakistan or in Bangladesh anytime during his break or her break time. Decreasing break time, as I said before, losing skilled people. So skilled employees will, be, will, will feel bored later on. So they will leave the organization because this loyalty and the culture and the normal, the norms, the social norms of any inside any organization lack or lack of or ineffective technological communication networks. Sometimes it's very difficult to communicate uh, with different countries. Like certain countries in certain areas now, they are not allowing Skype, they are not allowing uh, WhatsApp, they are not allowing what else, uh, Skype, WhatsApp, every mean of communication. This you cannot actually uh, use with those people, uh, the, uh, communicate with those people. This is actually what Ahmad Sheikh written about the communication skills in, in this required area. There is remote management happening with the humanitarian and social work. Challenges, but 
in this area. Now we're talking, we're talking about humanitarian and social work. What are the challenges facing organization, humanitarian organization, or social organization in conflict zone or non-conflict zones? First of all, quality of program delivery. Time scale, need more documentation. Because it's not hands-on. By the time you get uh, 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 information from the village to the town to the city in the field, then from the city in the field to the regional office, then from the regional office to the headquarters, this takes longer time. Because you need to, be, to have the authentic documentation. This is number one. Capacity building becomes a challenge because all by network, which sometimes does not satisfy the employees. Okay? Especially if they are in a very remote area, in a village. Financial effectiveness needs more financial resources dealing with decision-making tools, obtaining work permissions, licenses, more financial regulation, more human resources, more and more and more. Because now it's about counter-extremism, counter-terrorism, counter-radicalism, and about de-risking. And you have to understand how the penny and the dollar being spent in the most remote area to keep your organization functioning. Supply quality, supply whether actually commodities or cash. Who is going to buy it, to purchase it? Whether from the HQ of the operational field offices, this will meet two challenges. First, delivery time could be very difficult because of the remoteness, because of the difficulties, because of the gatekeepers in this area, or the quality of supplier. You might only find one supplier will be able to deliver for you in this area, which was not the best. If you want to go for the best, you have to take more time. This is the quality of program delivery. Accountability and evaluation, another challenge. Program tools, machines, computers, cars, and other apparatus. More is needed and more human resources are required in this area. You employ more people to be more trustworthy, to being able to give you the right information at the right time from the right area. Because in most of the conflict zones or the remote area, reporting is very poor. You have actually to compensate it by employing more people or getting more machines which can actually help them. Response to outcomes from lessons learned. A lot of lessons learned. Okay? All parties involved have to agree on the process of communication and delivery. Lesson learned. We have a, a, a truck has been stolen in certain area controlled by an, a terrorist organization. So we have to learn from such a lesson how to prevent it in the future by doing the due diligence in this area and another area and knowing the gatekeepers in this area and other areas by telling our headquarters about the challenges facing us in this area and other areas. Okay? Monitoring and the implementation process requires more manpower, resources, documentation. In these areas, Documentation is extremely important, especially the original documents. That means more traditional visits to each individual who is benefiting from your, fee, your, 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 your supply. Complaint process based on reporting, not expert observation. Yani with the complaint, yes, but it is only come to us by a message not by somebody sitting with the people and interviewing them. All this will make a lot of challenges for accountability and evaluation. This, I think in this, yani, the people who prepared this one is Mohammed Najm, actually from Turkey, and, uh, uh, and Abd Aziz Khater. Both of them gave me this idea. So the first, the first part of the talk was by Ahmed Sheikh. The second part about humanitarian and social is by Mohammed Najm and Abd Aziz Khatr. I thank them for this. And I am saying it is their talk, not my talk. Third point of challenges for the humanitarian and social uh, organization is transparency requirements that satisfy whom? The donors, not your organization. In this area, you have a Western donor, you have governments, 
You have international agencies, you have Eastern donors, you have individual donors, you have companies, and each one of those donors have got requirements, and you need to satisfy all of them. Okay. In these challenges, types of documentation became difficult or impossible to obtain original documentation in certain areas. Even sometimes, some of the donors ask, if you, if you don't have the original document, just have a fingerprint, or just have a home address. Okay? Time scale for reporting would be extremely difficult. If you want it within a month, it may take two or three months. Required more time because of the long distances between their places of issuing approval and sending to donors. So as, as, as I said earlier, coming from a village in Somalia or Syria or Yemen to the town nearby, to the capital of Yemen, okay, where the operation is there, to the regional office in the organization, to the headquarter before it goes to the donor. And within the conflict, okay, or the difficult areas, okay, it takes more, more time to satisfy the donor. Time is good. Procedure regarding employment. If you employ somebody in a remote area, or if you purchase something, you find supplier from a remote area, this time procedure regarding employment and supplier selection needs more paperwork to guarantee transparency because they are not hands on there. You have to know that this supplier that is not to any, to any uh, terrorist <coughs> or radical organization. You need to go and look at the board of the company. You need to look at the history of the individuals you are going to employ. Okay? Before you employ or before you, make, you choose actually the supplier, him or herself. Transparency requirement that satisfy the donors. Number four, number D, participatory approach. What do you mean by participatory approach? Participatory approach is bottom-up approach. When you involve the local leaders of the community that you are serving and helping. If you are in a camp, I remember this in 2006 when we visited a, a camp in Asada in Yemen and we managed, we were well, actually Islamic Reef was... Uh, Managing this camp, more than 25,000 people were there. Uh, it's Harad. And we managed to get in this camp the, the people in the, inside the camp to manage the distribution and to manage the camp with the help of the organization and UN. These are when we talk about participatory approach. Participatory program design. You can involve those people, which some of them call you beneficiaries. I call them uh, owners or landlord to involve them in program design to know how to choose them how we choose them on the base of their knowledge history okay education and respect by the people in the camp or the displaced people uh, this is a participatory approach this participatory approach create flexibility of program change you give the, the, the field worker the flexibility to change the program from location-wise, beneficiaries-wise, service provider-wise, and decision-maker-wise. Because if it becomes an impossible to deliver to area A, which needs the most, you go to area B and to area C and area D. And this flexibility has to be given based on the participatory approach. The, need, the information needs to come from bottom up, from the people on the field. Feedback, relying more on communication tools and technology, not normal process. The same challenge again about documentation and others that we rely on technology 100%, which sometimes in social and humanitarian work, it becomes sometimes impossible or impediment. Coordination as well in this. You might find the coordination easy to be done in the field, but it's difficult to be transferring this because they are not, they are not actually... A decision makers. Coordination with whom? First of all, first coordination within the organization itself. Between me as a field worker in a village and my boss in the capital of the country that we are serving to the regional office in Amman, uh, Amman uh, uh, Jordan, or uh, Nairobi, or Ghazi Antab, then to the headquarters in London or New York or Kuwait or Qatar, whatever it is. This is a communication with the organization. 
needs more um, paperwork, coordination, meetings to give unified image. Everybody should go follow the same system of the process of decision making. Uh, coordination with whom? With effective partners and coordination bodies in the host country. You have to coordinate with the people in the country as well. Okay? This will take place between experts and relying on feedback from operational field offices. Third, third level of communication with the government, governmental organization, operational field work. Okay? Uh, the operational field offices don't have the authority to take decisions. They make coordination with the local government, but they don't, they are not decision makers. They have to come back to Doha or to Riyadh or to Qatar or to uh, Kuwait or to London or to Paris or to Cairo or to New York or, or, or Washington. Donor agencies. So the communication or the coordination should be between or and within the organization with effective partners, with government organization and with donor agencies. This is the difficulties of remote control, especially when you are dealing with humanitarian and social organization. Why international aid agencies endorsed or invented remote management policy? First of all, this is donor policy. Most of those international agencies relying heavily, most, I'm then saying all, heavily on government and international or, or uh, regional organization, global organizations as UN and European Union, and, 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 and. This is requirement by them, okay? Number two, fear <coughs> for the welfare of whom? Of the expat, not on the people in the, in, in, in the, in the area, which I, which I call them the, the, the landlords of our organization, the real owner of our fund. If I have an expat, I've, and if UN raise the flag, okay, all the expats will leave the difficult area and will leave the poor and vulnerable people who actually own the money of our operation stranded there. Number three, dependence on institutional funding. Some of the organizations get 70 to 80% of their money from institutional uh, organization, of the institutional donor. Uh, number four, such organizations are not a part of international huh? Humanitarian policy making. Most of these organizations are sitting outside and waiting for the whatever left on the table of donor, donor organization. They're not a part of humanitarian policy making, nor being able to provide research based policy papers as an alternative solution. Number five, such organizations are not mature enough to move from humanitarian response into sustainable development and coalition building. And this is what this is my message is to the organization, especially from the Arab area, from the world's country, to do what? Please focus on development, on rehabilitation, on capacity building, on advocacy, on research, on building local community in the field, on building sustainable development program in the field, not humanitarian response only. Also, another challenge, we don't yet understand the multitude of diversity the multitude of diversity of humanitarian and social work. What is this? Which include rehabilitation, development, advocacy, research, human rights, legal, community building. That's what I was talking about earlier on. Number seven, we forgot quite often the purpose of creation of our organization. And to run to get the money and to forget the cause, the idea the poor, the needy, the elderly, the sick, the widow, the orphan, the displaced, the raped, the injured, the dead, the refugees, we forgot them. Because we want money, 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 to keep the organization going. What is the relationship between Kiki, dance, and remote management? This is it. This is the philosophy behind my talk today. I explained to all of you who is Kiki, and Kiki cha-cha-cha, I twist again, rock and roll, and uh, Greece, and uh, Saturday Night Fever, and uh, in the Arab world, so many, many, many things which I mentioned yesterday. Okay. We flow 
with the flow to go anywhere that we don't know. This is for the youth. Please, for God's sake, understand how you stand, where to go, what to say, what you need to do, and your vision for your country, for your community, for your religion, and for humanity. We implement this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ who said, the people before you used to follow other. I can't remember. Uh, hand fist by hand fist. Like this. Shibra and shibra. Then dra'an by dra'an. And arm lens by arm lens. Even if they go to a hole, to a tunnel of a lizard, they follow blindly. Those individuals would be weightless, shapeless, tasteless, and they will have no character. Neither for themselves, nor for their family, not for the society, not for humanity, not for their country. This is what the Prophet mentioned 1400 years ago plus. Shibra and Bishibra, Wadra'an and Hatta Eza Dakhalo, Juhra Dubbin, they go into this small hole of a leather in the middle of the desert, we follow them blindly. Create your character, shape your value, stand up for your morality, and save humanity. This is the first hadith. Why? There's another dynamic hadith also by the Prophet ﷺ. He said, once upon a time, one day, all nations will rush to eat you as the hungry men are rushing, are hurrying up to eat from this big dish. Can you see it? Everybody is running. And they are trying to eat from this big dish. And he said to them, they asked the Prophet is that because we are few? Prophet Muhammad SAW said, no, you'd be plenty. You are now 1.7 billion. At the time, the Muslims were maybe a few thousands or tens of thousands. But, as he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll be like this creamy, frothy layer who go with the wave. And the wave takes them, the wave of the sea takes them wherever it goes. They go with the flow. Don't go with the flow. A leader like each and one of you, youth, should create the flow and should let the flow to follow them. You will be like this frothy layer and the wave will take it wherever it goes. That's what's happening when we listen to the Kiki song, we listen to Cha 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 or Rock and Roll or whatever you call it in Arabic in this area. And the end of that, the second part of that is Allah will take the fear out of the hearts of your enemy. And will we'll throw in your heart something called wan. The Arabs at that time, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, did not know what do we, without the Prophet ﷺ mean of the word wan. He said, what is this word called wan, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ? He said, حب الدنيا, the love of dunya and the fear of death. This is exactly what we see today. Exactly. Live your moment. Live your time, live your second, live chalab, 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 chalab. No. Then my message to the youth to conclude is please, please, please don't be an, a bubble flying or being taken by the wave, wherever the wave take it. Be the people who can create the wave and can build community and can change humanity and can save humanity. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me today. I'll see you inshallah next week. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.